Uh, when games will be fully path traced, what options do you expect we'll see in the graphics menu, aside from the obvious post-processing stuff like DLSS, texture quality and ray options are a given, but what else would we need that even has any performance impact large enough that it would necessitate the option to turn it down slash off? I was a bit surprised by how many rasterization settings there still were in the Alan Wake 2 path tracing mode. I guess you spent a lot of time with Alan Wake. Can you explain that, Alex? Well, there's still a lot of rasterization uh, settings modes in um, Cyberpunk RT Overdrive, right? Yeah, of course, because not everything's uh, going to be path traced. Things like volumetrics are not going to be path traced. Um, whether or not something is visible uh, and what LOD it uses, these things are not. Path tracing in games currently isn't doing uh, primary visibility for most things. Right. It's slightly there. Um, for some things but not f like the, the generic ge geometry you see usually so there are a lot of settings uh regarding those things it's mainly about the lighting when they say path tracing that the lighting is being done that way so um in that case it makes a lot of sense to have those things but when let's just presume in the future that just like uh portal rtx or quake 2 rtx that even like primary visibility is being traced which is Maybe an eventual, his, you know, historical outcome. We'll see how long it takes for that to happen if it does, because there's still some benefits to rasterizing the like certain aspects of the game. Um, and uh, when that happens, I think I would love to see like the the ray count for certain things, uh, kind of like we saw in Quake Two RTX. I would also maybe love to see like the update rate for aspects of the BVH, so you could control the gpu and cpu costs of that much better so uh, in a game like spider-man for example i really like that they allow you to control the distance at which uh geometry is actually in there to be traced against for certain things but i would also love to see like distant objects update at like five frames out of every 60 maybe you want to turn that up to 60 out of 60 or turn it down or have them be static etc these are all options that i think would uh make the path tracing future much more scalable so it does so it doesn't just run on rtx 4090s 4070s etc but it, the future gpus could then that are lower end could also get path tracing experiences with uh lower end cpus as well too mm -hmm. any thoughts on this one john uh, I mean, I think Alex kind of nailed it there, but yeah, it's just um, turning down things within like the BVH yes. structure makes the most sense, right? Like just if you can reduce the number of rays you need to send out and the density of those rays, you're going to get some performance gain. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately mm -hmm. to get really like the, the ultimate path trace, you just have to send off so many freaking rays and we're still focusing on, I think that's where we're going to continue to see upgrades beefier hardware you can send out more rays get more accuracy without needing to rely on on other technologies to sort of make up for it uh i i wonder if we could ever get to a point i mean denoising it seems kind of necessary unless you got to just this point where you're overlapping like overdrawing so many rays but at that point the right. expense of that would be so high that it doesn't seem feasible so I mean, I yeah. guess it just it, it feels like the focus of where you'll need to turn down the settings could potentially change depending on what they're doing. But there's still a lot of rasterized stuff happening in these games anyway. So 